Welcome to NBA coverage here on Betting with the Bag for Saturday, April 27th. We have four games and huge games. We start off at 1 p.m. Eastern, and we have the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Ian Cameron, joining us for this NBA breakdown. Bobano has done a great job in a small sample size. Uh, so we didn't have you for more uh, earlier in the year but you've been great uh bobano 20 and 13 60.6 plus 5.37 units roi plus 16.27 percent average line minus 111 and as you guys see i'm in plus units for the first time in nba in about four months uh so it's been a it's been a struggle to get back to plus and it feels good to be there now let's continue to climb saturday april 27th action let's go east first round oh sorry that's friday sorry here we go uh east first round game four Cleveland Cavaliers at the Orlando magic. Uh, you know, we played game three, like a fiddle. It was about as easy as, as game. well, we were lucky to get the full game over, which shouldn't have happened, but the Cavaliers gave up and we were fortunate to get the full game over, but cash magic first quarter cash first half over. We have the Cavs 22 and 19 on the road magic 29 and 12 at home. We're at the Kia center in Orlando, Florida. We talked about the, percentages expecting them to improve for the three-point shooting and they didn't really improve that much uh you know it's funny that the game went over uh well the first half went over so easily it didn't uh we didn't get exactly the three-point improvement that i was expecting uh the cavaliers shot 23.5 percent. i thought they would improve even though they were up 2-0 because they'd shot so poorly in the first two games. And we knew that the Magic would improve, but they only shot 35.1% from three. It wasn't this huge improvement from the Magic, but they shot 51.1% from the field. The one thing is they weren't turning over the basketball. There was, I think, one turnover in the first quarter, if, if one. They played very smart basketball. Now, I see both teams still going to deliver. One of the problems that people were talking about with why they weren't joining me on the magic in game three was that the Cavaliers were just too big. They were just too big. Bancaro plays big and Franz Wagner. I mean, sure. He got stuffed at the rim a couple of times. He doesn't have the size, but the magic out rebounded the Cavaliers 51 32. Is that an anomaly? Yes. That's not going to happen again. And I'm sure that Bickerstaff, because uh, the problem that Bickerstaff has with X's nose that we've all talked about all the time, he is a pretty good cheerleader. You know, he knows to get in these guys' grill and get them to step up, and they're going to have to step up because they should be out rebounding the Magic badly. But still, we're still sitting at a point right now where both teams are shooting so badly. The Cavaliers are 41.6 from the field through three games. Uh, the Orlando Magic are 40.3. In the 10 games leading into the playoffs, even though the Cavaliers only won four of those 10 games, they were shooting 48.8 from the field and 39.1 from three. I still see positive regression capable for over action for us the problem is is that i don't really like going back to the well after just cashing you know it's not it's not appealing to me i i know that my subconscious is saying oh you know go bet it again bet it again and, and it just makes me a little hesitant let's go over the line movement and hear how bobano is moving on game one on saturday right now we have the magic sitting at minus two at minus 109 they opened up minus two and a half the magic on the side they don't interest me here uh, you know, the Cavaliers will slap back and, and, and the Cavaliers are a better basketball team than Orlando. You know, this total though is at 201 and a half, uh, open up at 201. It's gone up a half point. I truly, I don't see why this doesn't go over again. This should have gone over with flying colors if it wasn't for the Cavaliers being so far out of the game and just giving up. We take a look at the cash flow here. We don't have a ton of tickets in 777, 70% of tickets, 75% of cash on the magic. You know, that doesn't appeal to me. 92% of tickets and 89% cash on the over. Well, it's gone up a half point. We're less than a thousand tickets in. This is tricky. Uh, maybe it's a, maybe I should just step back here after cashing on the first half full game over. Take it away, Bobano Cavaliers Magic, Saturday, 1 p.m. Yeah, it's a pass for me. I got my win with Orlando last night. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go back to them here. Um, because Cleveland probably is going to step up with a better game. And I just don't think they're going to end up winning the series. I liked Orlando to have the big performance last night. They did. Can they do it again? Perhaps uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to be on Cleveland either, but you know, I had my Orlando win. 
they had the big 120-183 victory last night. I would expect Cleveland to respond in kind with a much better performance here uh, in Game 3. Uh, and I am worried they might win this game. Um, so I'm off this game, side and total. Nothing for me. I can understand that thought process. In fact, maybe the Cavaliers are the look here. You know, maybe it's Cavaliers' first quarter and full game, just like we did with the Magic. Yep. I mean, look how bad they played. They also didn't play much. You know, um, they played really bad. I mean, their starters from three went two for 17. You know, I mean, that's Which just, is not going to duplicate itself. You're no. not going to get Mitchell six for 16. You're not going to get two for 10 out of Darius Garland again. I, I'd be stunned if you see that again. Huh. So I guess Max Truce did nothing, and he's a capable shooter for them. I guess I, I now talking this out, I'm leaning towards the Cavs first yeah. quarter and full game. The problem is, do you want to fade the magic at home? 29 and 12 this year. I mean, that's yeah, not, not a enough. Team. Not a, 30 and 12 straight up at home yeah. now after yeah, after last night. No, I don't want to fade them that badly. Exactly. All right. I've got we're gonna have to sit with that. And then and then I don't know if I want to go right back to the over, although it makes perfect sense to me. It makes perfect sense. What would stop the over? Well, you know, Mobley and Allen sitting in front of the rim and saying, well, we're going to step up today and we're not going to let anyone close. And then the Magic will have to hit their three-point shooting, uh, deliver in three-point, which they haven't done all season. I mean, crazy watching Cole Anthony hit buckets last game. So, I, and then everybody just saw it over cash and maybe they'll go. So I, I've got a lot more to think about, but. I'm interested in going back, flipping, going back to Cleveland, but I don't want to fade the magical. Maybe this is just a stay off spot. Well, we've got uh, 25 hours or 24 hours to figure that out. Let's move on to the next spot for Saturday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern West first round game three, Oklahoma City at New Orleans Pelicans. Oklahoma City Thunder 57, 25, 24 and 17 on the road at New Orleans Pelicans, 49, 33, 21, 19 at home. Smoothie King Center, New Orleans, Louisiana. I was really upset that I stayed off the Thunder. It's still eating at me, honestly. I came in planning a triple up and I got completely talked off of it. Now I didn't bet the other side, but I love the situation. The Pelicans to me are now in game six of the series. They've been playing playoff type games since those two games with the Lakers where they could have skipped the play in, uh, you know, uh, then they beat the Kings and then then they come in and they almost beat the Thunder against the rusty Thunder team. Then they get their asses kicked by the Thunder. And now, you know, the question is, will Zion be here on the floor? I mean, this is a crucial, crucial uh, information. Steve G says the Pelicanos got humiliated. Uh, Harold Williams says Cavs win a close a game four and he likes Pelicans minus one here. Uh, the question is, is Zion on the floor? Uh, maybe Bobano can start with that. But let's set this one up here. The Pelicans have shot well in the playoffs. It's the Thunder who've shot poorly. The Thunder are a juggernaut. I don't know why everybody was so quick to fade them because of the Pelicans' strong defense and strong perimeter defense. Because the Thunder, to me, are a team that can beat you in so many different ways. Uh, and the Pelicans... If the Pelicans don't score, they, you know, they, they, they'll struggle to beat you. Now they can get stops, but if they can't score, it's a problem. This total is sitting at 208. It opened up at 211, 211. So we've dropped three points already on the total from a point spread scenario. We're sitting here with Oklahoma City minus one at even money. I, I would prefer the Pelicans here. I, I think that, that I, you know, they just got embarrassed. They're a team with heart. Right now, you have 88% of tickets and 85% of cash on the over. This line's dropped three points. That's 1,772 tickets calculated. Then you have 99% of the tickets and 86% of the cash on the Thunder. I mean, we know that's going to change. You know, we know that's going to change. Uh, do we need to wait to find out about Zion? Take it away, Bobano. Thunder Pelicans. Yeah, I mean, Zion's out. Zion's not going to play. Zion won't be back till Tuesday at the earliest is what it's looking like right now, which would be game four of this series. Um I think OKC is the much better team. I respect this two nothing down back home spot, and it's only again you know pick a minus one here. Uh, Pelicans after a blowout loss, uh, this is their spot to maybe respond and get back into this series. I'm off this game, but if the Pelicans lose, I'll I'll be on OKC to sweep in Game Four because I think they'll be done, even if Zion comes back in Game Four. And look, Zion's played his best basketball as a member of the Pelicans before his injury, so 
you know, it's at the point now where his absence is a big one, especially when Brandon Ingram's failing to step up consistently. McCollum hasn't had the best series. And then you look at Oklahoma City. What can't they do? Shea Gilgis Alexander can dominate, can score in any range, perimeter, mid range, take it to the basket. Jalen Williams has been outstanding in this series. Josh Giddy starting to make threes in the game two blowout win. Uh, Chet Holmgren uh, has held his own. Look, he gives up some some size to Valanchunas down low, but Chet Holmgren has held his own and he's gotten better as this series has got. They're just loaded. Oklahoma City. I don't. I didn't get the resistance to this. People not b- believing in this team. What? Because they're young, they're inexperienced. That 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 alone is going to make them flop here in the playoffs. They look like a tight knit together group. You saw it after the game. All five of them getting interviewed in the post game uh, after the win. It's not a team I want to step in front of. I'm not stepping in front of OKC, but I do respect this spot for the Pelicans enough to pass the game and lay off. Yeah, it's Pelicans or no action. Yep. Pelicans are no action. Um, and, you know, Troy does not think OKC is a juggernaut. Uh, you know, we, we don't have to agree on everything. That's fine. 57 and 25, this basketball team was this year with Shea. How many games did Shea play? What, 65? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the the Pelicans, I expect to show a ton of heart here. Would that mean that, they're, uh, that we would prefer to have them early, first quarter, first half, Pelicans? Uh, very possible. Uh, this isn't a Pelican team that you want the. If you don't cover the first half, the chances of covering the full game I think are slim. Uh, you 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 don't want the Pelicans to have to claw back in the basketball game. Uh, you know you want them to be in control and play tough. And there is a little home road dichotomy with the Thunder. You know, just a little bit. You know, they are only twenty four and set. It's still a good road record. Twenty better better road record than Pelicans home record. That's right, and thirty five and eight at home for Oklahoma City. Yep. Okay, so it's Pelicans or no bet for me. DC Capper leaning towards OKC. And at this point, I know we're very, you know, 1,772 tickets in, but 99% of tickets have come in on OKC. Viper MB says, I think the series is a sweep, but he's laying off. I'm telling you what, I hope New Orleans wins game three. Zion comes back game four. People are going to see that New Orleans won game three. Uh, Zion's back in game four. I'm going to take New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans, and I'm going to be, nope, not so fast. Give me OKC in game four. Oh, I agree. Vote. That's the perfect script. That's the perfect script. Yep. I think I move on the Pelicans. I think I move on the Pelicans. I, I'm going to sit with this market a little longer. And, and I know Oklahoma also, City is freaking awesome off a loss this year, like incredible yeah. off a loss. Yeah. But they have such a huge rest advantage right now. And I don't. Yeah. I, I was trying to stress that yeah. in the, the breakdown you know, with Dutch on Wednesday. Okay. I, I the Pelicans I'm gonna I'm very very interested in. Let's move on to 6 p.m. Eastern on Saturday with the Boston Celtics at the Miami Heat, the Casea Center in Miami, Florida. Another Heat first quarter was another one that got away from me on uh, Wednesday, and then I had no NBA. Now the good thing is we have Operation Garcia in effect, so it's not like there's no action. There's still a ton of action. Let's talk about this one here. We have the Heat plus nine. They opened up at plus eight and a half, a half point move towards the Boston Celtics. And from a total side of things, this is a 202. Uh, opened up at 205. We've dropped three points. We get to the cash flow here for this one. We have 94% of the tickets on the Celtics and just 24% of the cash is uh, interesting. On the total, we have 70% of the tickets and 93% cash on the over. Oh, oh yes, Connor. Uh, I mean, I've done it. I mean, we can go over those numbers at some point, but we got to speed it up a little bit right now because Boban's got to go. But yes, I've I've bet every single player probably. I've missed a couple of the late editions. I've missed, I think, two or three uh, of all the games. But I bet every single other one of them, and uh, and it hasn't been too successful the last two days. So I'm very interested in see what happens tonight. Here we go, Celtics Miami. You know, the one thing that was being stressed about during the telecast of Game Two was how the the, Celt- the Celtics haven't played in close games. That we we haven't seen them pressured and stressed. Uh, I'm not. I mean, we've seen Tatum and Brown not really handle those situations too well throughout their career, but they've been so dominant that we haven't seen them stressed. And this Miami Heat team is the exact opposite. We've seen them in the tightest games and the closest situations, and now they're doing it without Jimmy Butler. The this year, the Heat in the playoffs are shooting the ball beautifully. They're shooting. Oh, sorry. Let's get this. Uh, there we go. Uh, they're shooting the ball 
Oh, there we go. Sorry, you got that, Jose. My bad. They're shooting the ball beautifully. 43.8 from three, 48.1 from the field. And so are the Celtics. The Celtics are shooting the ball fine. And it's confusing to try and kind of quantify the, what happened in that basketball game. I mean, what what went wrong for the Celtics? I mean, we know what went right for the Heat. We know that Tyler Hero was hitting his shots. He went six for 11 from three. Uh, Martin goes five for six from three. So you put you, those two guys go 11 for 17 from three. I mean, they're likely to win the basketball game, and, that, and that's what happened. I mean, look at what they did overall, 23 of 43 from three, 53.5%, 23 threes. Celtics only hit 12 threes. They were 12 of 32. A poor Zingas was one of nine from the field. Has he ever shown the character of a champion? I mean, the, are there question marks now about the Boston Celtics? What is your plan here for game three? Bobano, take it away, Celtics Heat. This, this total looks way too low to me. I mean, we're talking 202, 202 and a half with a Boston team that didn't shoot well in game two. Uh, and that game got to what, 212? And they still, what, were they only 38% uh, uh, from three? 46% over, actually not bad. But to me, this total is too low, uh, way too low. I mean, you look at this series here with the Celtics and the Heat. Uh, you know, in, in going back, uh, I know game one stayed under, but that's game, uh, still ended up getting to, uh, 208 points total in that game was 210 total goes down to 205 and a half in game two. And it goes over. And now you're going to put this total at 202, 202 and a half. I don't get it. I don't get the infatuation with betting this under. I really don't. I'm, I'm shocked by it. In fact, uh, three of the last five meetings have gone over the total going back to the regular season, going back to October, their first meeting, we saw 100, 230, 253 in the second meeting. February 11th, uh, it stayed under, but we got 216. Uh, we saw 208 uh, in game one of this series, 212 in game two. Explain to me how this totals 202, 202 and a half. I like the over. I'm on the over. It's an official play. It's my first official play of the Saturday slate. Uh, I think Boston back uh, back on the even though they're on the road off a loss, I think you're going to see a better collective effort from the big three uh, Brown uh, Tatum and especially Chris Stapps Porzingis. I think he knows he's got to have a better game. That was not good from him uh, in game two uh, in that one. Miami will not shoot as well as obviously as they did in game two, even though they're at home here for game three. But I'm just asking them to shoot solid. And again, they're they're not going to duplicate raining threes left and right like they did in game two. But they are back home. We see a lot of the supporting cast in games like this step up and play well at home shooting the ball. I still remember what they did uh, as far as uh, game number uh, two, or sorry, game uh, the Chicago game last week uh, against uh, the Bulls, where even without Jimmy Butler and Terry Rozier, they had no problem offensively. Boston will be better defensively, and Miami won't shoot as well. But I still think Boston, they're going to have a good offensive game. Miami at home. Role players will step up. They'll do enough offensively. To me, I, I don't understand why this total's fallen as low as it is. And I can actually get on a over 202 minus 110 right now at uh, Pinnacle. So, yeah, that's what I'm on here, over 202. That's uh, that's wild, wild stuff here. 70% uh, of the tickets, 93% of cash on the over. It's dropped down to 202. Uh, Harold Williams thinking that's too yeah. low as well. Uh, Troy saying books are begging for the over. Sweaty Butcher in the house. Great to see you, my man. Says Miami won't crack 90. Uh, Bobano, believing that this is low-hanging fruit. Maybe you're absolutely right. Uh, Celtics heat over 202, a minus 110 for Bobano. At this point, I don't know what to do with this game. Uh, I can understand why the public is on Boston. I'm a little surprised. It's a Boston that... spot, so I don't really love going against Boston. I like Miami in game two. My my approach is going to be Boston if they win, especially if they win in cover here. I'll take Miami in game four. Spo off a loss is like magic. Just magic. Yep. Yep. Let's roll on to our final spot on Saturday night, 8 30 p.m. Eastern. Denver Nuggets. Great basketball team at the LA Lakers. We're 28 and 14 at home this year. It was uh wild watching them fall apart. You know. Minus two first half, minus one full game. I mean, is that not the biggest red flag in, in sports gambling? And Troy talked a lot about it yesterday. Even though it was so blatant that they were going to cover the first half, I still was on them full game. I don't know why. And I don't want to make that mistake again. 
Well, even I was starting to get a little worried about the first half there. Denver cut that deficit pretty close there at the end of the first half. Yeah, got down to four and something like that. Yeah, but but I mean, the the key for me is you. The reason why we're working together as a team is to succeed long term. And the reason why we're transparent and accountable is to prove that this can happen honestly, which is something that this industry is devoid of. And I don't want to ever make that mistake again. I'm not going to make it again. It's never going to happen again. Rest of my life. If the first half is bigger than the full game spread on the favorite, and it's a very small number, I'm only going to be on first half for the rest of my life. Lesson learned. Here we go. Uh, last night's basketball game was very disheartening for Laker fans, and I get it. But sports fans, I think, really liked it. You know, um, everything saying that the Lakers were going to take care of business and they shoot 18.5% from three and lose. Uh, Denver only shot 17.9% from three. Denver did not look very good. The Lakers lost that game. Can you imagine? If you if I told you that the, the Nuggets are going to shoot 17.9% from three and the Lakers are going to turn the ball only only turn the ball over seven times, like, well, how much did the Lakers win by? Uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty up, up wild that the Nuggets are just their championship caliber team. They showed that. And D'Angelo Russell, I don't care how good he looks at times. How often do we get into the big game and he's nowhere to be found? You know, I just, he was horrific. Now, I do think that the Nuggets, I mean, do you think the Nuggets care about this winning streak against the Lakers? Let's start there. But man, do you think that's a very important to them that they keep beating the Lakers? Because I don't think Jokic cares about any of these things. <laughs> I think he's just loosey goosey. He cares about winning. He wants another championship. I mean, I, I, but, but he doesn't. He doesn't have these. He doesn't the 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 storyline that basketball fans bring to the game. He is. He doesn't care about. Do you think he cares very much about this winning streak, or the Nuggets do, or do you think they're just fine winning the series in five games in Denver? I don't know if the late. It's not so much that Denver's content with you know winning at home in Game Five. It's are the Lakers even good enough to even give a shit enough to avoid a sweep at this point? I mean, I'm hearing LeBron James after last night saying, well, you know what? We lost the game, but you know what? It's just basketball. It's just basketball? That's the quote I'm hearing from one of the great all-time players in the sport, down 3 nothing in this series, and his only response is, it's just basketball? What does that speak to about any sort of desire, any sort of passion, any sort of pride that this Lakers team has? And I didn't see any of that last night, desire and pride. You know, once that game got away, the body language sucked. It did. Let's be real. There was no energy. Everyone just sat down. No one was talking with one another on the bench for the Lakers as that game slipped away in the second half. Um, there's no freaking way I'm taking the Lakers here full game. I, I'm not even sure I like them first half, which I've cashed every single game in this series. I, I don't even know if I can go back to the first half to, in this one. I lean that way because if, if the Lakers are ever going to do anything, it's the first half. Um, I think Denver put puts them to puts them out of puts them out of their misery here. I, I don't love the three on the road necessarily, um, so I don't know if I'll I'll move on Denver. But full game, Denver or nothing. This total has gone from two sixteen and a half to two eighteen. This point spread has gone from the Lakers. Plus, it hasn't actually. Uh, it's, the Nuggets have gone from minus three, minus one to five to minus three, minus. They're five. trying to get Darvin Am fired. I think so too. Honestly, yeah. Then, from a cash flow perspective, at this point, sixty percent of tickets, sixty percent cash on the Denver Nuggets, ninety six percent of tickets, and eighty eight percent cash is on the over. Generally speaking, when everybody gives up on a basketball team, it it does pique my interest. Uh, I don't know why anybody expected LeBron to say anything different. When has he ever said, yeah. this is everything to us, our whole lives are online? When has he ever said that? I mean, I just, I don't know. I mean, there's a reason why Michael and Kobe are in a different conversation than LeBron. Because winning was He's everything to them. that's going to be going into basketball. That's taken up his time and attention. He's got movie deals and endorsement deals. I think he's going to be doing stuff with film work and directing and television when he's done. He's got this new big time X's and O's break it down basketball podcast now with JJ Reddick that he does now as well. He's got so much other shit that I truly believe at this stage of his life and in this stage of his career, he's more into than playing basketball. 
you know, I, and I think that's kind of what led to a quote like that from last night from him. I think, yeah, no, that's well put. I'm going to need more time in this basketball game. Uh, I mean, as much as I despise D'Angelo Russell, and as much as I love the Operation Garcia, you got to think he bounces back. I mean, he's such a diff. They need a scoring weapon here, you know, other than AD and AR-15. I mean, when, when Torian Prince is invisible, um, if you have Prince invisible and D'Angelo Russell invisible, they have no chance to win a basketball game. No. Uh, Markel says stop it and just take Denver and call it. Um, uh, look, I, Marco, I respect, I respect the, the, the thought process here, but, um, look, you guys know how I work when all of you guys turn your back on a basketball team. It piques my interest. I'll just leave it there. It piques yeah. my interest here. The Lakers pique my interest. Uh, I don't know if I can get to the window or anything like that, but, uh, the idea that LeBron just doesn't care that much also means that there's not that much pressure on LeBron. He's not like, oh, this is every, you know, I mean, he's not like for if LeBron went out and had a great basketball game in game four, that wouldn't surprise anybody because he's not, he's not walking into the floor. No, no one's screaming Westbrook and he, West brick. And he's like, that's not my name. I mean, it's not, there's none of that's going on. He just doesn't, you know, so um, BJ said, yeah, they piqued my interest last night. Look, uh, last night was fine. Everything was fine. We won one on one in that basketball game. Uh, I'm not going to say anything at this point, like, oh, I'm going to bet uh, the Lakers or anything like that. Uh, the Nuggets are stone cold killers, and I respect yep. that very much. Let's review. They swept them last year, and they won't think twice about sweeping them this year. No, I feel they you. Won't. I feel you. But I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm not. It's not going to be a surprise to anybody if I decide, you know, to bet uh, just a one unit on the Lakers at plus whatever. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it. Uh, now, I'm not saying I'm going to do the money that, line was minus 140 or better. I would have been on Denver for an official play here, but it's like minus 155, minus 160. So I'm not in at that price. I don't want to take minus three, but uh, Denver, still Denver, nothing for me. No, I feel you. And this this is one of the great uh, ideas that we've had about capping Friday and Saturday with you, Bobano, is so that we can get ahead of the game for tomorrow's action. Let's go over everything. I'm now very interested in the Cavaliers. Very interested in them. And I, I don't say, I, I think first quarter, full game Cavaliers. I, I'm very interested in the Pelicans. And. To a lesser extent, I'm very interested in the Lakers. Bobano's on the over 202 in Celtics Heat. That's the game I'm not interested in. Uh, Troy Torrance says betting the Lakers is a fool's errand. Uh, I've heard people tell us that betting is a fool's errand. Anytime I see fool's errand, I get I think of assholes who have said that to me in the past. <laughs> so let's not use that term. Uh, it just it gets me the wrong way because people have said that to me in the past. And I don't need to have a conversation with people who say that betting is a fool's errand. Sports betting is a fool's errand. I don't need to have that conversation. I don't need to, uh, you know, if you don't like it, stop talking to me. Uh, no, Troy, I don't think you need to hear I am another asshole. It's just that term. That term always uh, gets hit, hits me the wrong way. It's me the wrong way. But I love you, Troy. You know that. All right, Bobano, thank you so much for sticking around extra. You, you double duty. You hammered, NA, hammered NHL Friday and Saturday. Hammered NBA Friday and Saturday. We love you, man. Uh, go out there and get that cash. Please support Bobano's new X uh, handle. It's at Bobano Bets. And support the Ice Guys. What a great show that is. Bobano, thank you so much for your time. Any last words for the Capri supporting the show? No, let's have a great weekend. Cash some tickets. Enjoy. Jimmy, you too. Uh, we'll see you next week.